Uh, hello, my name is Kelly, and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things home, which is currently Port Barton in the Philippines, and all things away, which is travel. Yay, yay, yay. And right now, I have like two hours before I check out for my hostel, literally two hours, but I just had to say this. I've been in the Philippines so far for almost four weeks now, and I just wanted to share things in the Philippines that just make sense. Um, <laughs> It just it just happens to make sense said it before and i'm gonna say it again i really love my time here it's been nothing short of amazing nothing short of wonderful and i'm currently in port barton which is this very chill relaxed town near um in palawan like three hours away from el nido here we go things in the philippines that just make sense number one the philippines has the best beaches read my lips and i'm saying it with my chest it has the best beaches you've ever seen in your life i'm talking soft sand i'm talking like clear blue waters life is all here older than the rain these details of sister da -da 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 -da. country roads take me okay stop it's too early to break out into song these here are also very active so if you're really to coral reefs and like snorkeling the reefs here are very very active depending on where you go there's different type of beaches whether you like rocky beaches or soft smooth sand apart from white beach there seems to be a white beach in every single location there's been a white beach in mobile there's been a white beach in coron there's been a white beach in el nido <laughs> And there's definitely a white beach in Port Barton. Um, so my favorite beach so far has been Coconut Beach in Port Barton. So it's a beach with pigs around. I know it just makes sense, but it's very relaxed. The water is very shallow, very blue, and it is more affordable than most of the other entrance fees for the beaches. So it's fifty dollars to enter. So I'm just gonna fan myself because I am boiling hot. So that's something that makes sense. Uh, so another of my favorite beach in the Philippines has been a Palatin Beach in Sikihor. The palm trees are just gorgeous. You get some these mini, um, not octopus, what are they called? What are they called? Squids? Jellyfish, mini jellyfish. Apparently they sting. I haven't gotten stung yet, but um, those, those beaches are so beautiful. And the sun sets on the beach. The sunsets on the beach are truly some of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in my life. Number two of things in the Philippines that just make sense. So the Philippines has very complex and expensive transportation. Whether it's air, whether it's sea, whether it's land, it has all three. And it can be hard to, actually I'll say it's easy to navigate, but it takes many steps to get somewhere. Because the Philippines is actually a collection of islands, over 1,700, don't quote me, but a collection of islands and so you have to get from one island to the other for example it took me 75 dollars to get from coron to mobile on like a four hour ferry and that was like the standard price it took me 80 dollars to get from from Sikihor to cebu although like i don't mind paying that fee like honestly i truly don't mind because it's getting from one location to the other note that the the cost is the same for locals as it is for tourists and that's a lot of money and i tell them like oh i traveled to Koran, or i ask them have you been to mobile or have you been to like this other island they're like no because like they go there on holidays but it's usually like very expensive so like it could be easy to navigate depending on where you are but i would say it is yeah it's very expensive like just be prepared for that with the transportation you also have like port fees and that brings me to the third thing in the philippines that just makes sense is that there's fees for every single thing no no, no i'm not joking there's fees for every single yeah i turned on my speakers because of the cicadas but i feel like i'm just gonna talk in my natural voices 
I'll put in my natural voice, singular, excuse me. Entrance fees to waterfalls and talking fees for ports. Usually it's not that expensive. The most expensive like entrance fees to activities I've seen is like $100 to Kambugai Falls. But honestly, that's it. But it's usually 20 pesos, 30 pesos, 40 pesos. Um, and there's fees everywhere. Like you actually can't escape it. They also make you sign your name in like books. So also be prepared for that. So your name and where you're from, I think, is to keep record just in case something happens. The other thing is that even though there's fees for everything, like people try and make profit out of most things. And so I remember when I took a zip line from El Nido, like from White Beach, or no, from one place in El Nido to White Beach, I took a zip line. So before I even got on the zip line, they're like, do you want a GoPro video? I was like, no, nah, I'm good, I have my phone. By the time I landed on the other end of the zip line, they said, do you also want a picture? It's 100 pesos. And it's like, people try and make money. And you know what, like, it's to be expected. This brings me to number four. I think of things that just make sense in the Philippines is that constipation exists. I'm not joking. Constipation exists because there is bread everywhere. I have never seen so many bakeries in my life than I have in like in in the Philippines. And there's every corner. So I really like Julie's Bakeries. I think Julie's Bakery in Sikia Heart has been my favorite. And when you're here, you definitely have to try the pandasal. Like it's like 10 peso like bread. They're like dinner rolls but sweeter and better and warm and fresh and the best things ever. But with bread comes constipation. And so the Philippines... <laughs> I don't know what people say but people say that like food in the Philippines is not good that's a flat-out lie I'm here to tell you that I don't know what those people have been eating but I love Filipino food it could be a bit repetitive because most of the dishes are centered around rice and a meat dish or a vegetable dish but once you go outside the regular adobo and pancit it's actually really good so far I think my favorite Filipino food is sisig and pork sisig I also like grilled squid grilled shrimp uh, and grilled like like fresh grilled fish it's just like, like if you're used to a rice heavy culture and i'm nigerian so you know i'm used to rice heavy culture you'll be fine you'll totally be fine i feel like the people who say filipino food is bad is the people who eat filipino western food so like pizza in the philippines or pasta in the philippines and honestly filipino filipino food the best thing ever and with constipation i also just want to add just as an aside in the Philippines, you can't flush toilet paper. Just don't do it. It's actually, it would block the system. And so bidets are a thing. If you don't know what bidets are, Google is free. But I might install a bidet when I get back home because it's such a, just know, be prepared for constipation and bidets to help your constipation. Let's bring you to number five of things that just make sense in the Philippines is that you're going to be eating with dogs. No, I don't mean men. I mean actual physical dogs. Good boys at your table. Um, honestly, you get used to it. Literal pigs on this beach. It's like pigs in a blanket. Oh, that is so cool. And then that's mama pig. But those are the baby pigs. Oh. You eat with dogs and cats. Sometimes they're street dogs sometimes they're street cats sometimes they belong to the property but i like pets a lot um i haven't actually had an experience with like an animal biting me they're usually very very well behaved but of course take caution i didn't do a rabies shot so i usually don't get too too close to them i'm lying i've been getting so close to them which is honestly i'll take my risk um, actually no not with rabies i should probably not take the risk I would tell you though, sometimes they like beg you to feed them with their eyes and you get so guilty and once you feed one, you just have to keep feeding one and I'm like, why are you looking at me? Windows eyes. Stop. Why do I keep doing this? Uh, safety and all, it's like super okay. I stabbed my leg with a glass. Super random, I just realized. Um, I, in Port Barton on my first day, stepped on a piece of glass so I went through my Birkenstocks and um, I bled a lot and I was a bit worried. Can cover your foot. So can I put it in water or no? Mm, because it's difficult because you're on vacation. Yeah. So if you cannot resist. <laughs> yeah. So but um, just to be sure that you keep it 
You watch it. Um, but luckily on the island there was one last tetanus shot um, and a local woman really helped me and drove me there because I was bleeding quite heavily and so I didn't get to do a lot of water activities in Port Barton but um, yeah that was something health wise that like scared me so don't be worried most places have health centers um, and like regular trained doctors. So that brings me to number six or seven, I don't know where we are, number six of um, things that just make sense in the Philippines is that there is bumping nightlife depending on where you go. So far the two places that have had the best nightlife that I've seen is Mobile and uh, El Nido. They both have some of the best nightlifes um, ever. Uh, fun fact, there's a lot of Korean people in Mobile because my tour guide told me is that they come to Cebu to learn how to speak English for cheaper than Western countries because um, in the Philippines everybody speaks English. You actually don't need any to know any Tagalog like you probably should learn one or two just to be nice but every single person speaks English so mobile and El Nido have been like the best nightlife so far there are night markets there are clubs with music we said this on the channel we said it before I'm not a huge clubber I'm more of a live music fan and there's a lot of that in the Philippines <laughs> And fun fact also about, or something I've learned being here so far is like, I have never heard the original version of a song. It's always a Filipino cover of a song that I've always heard. Like, it's so funny, but like, even the, and it always sounds better, obvi, um, but I've never ever heard it. This is number six of things that just make sense. In the Philippines is that there's island hopping everywhere. There's day trips, there's two day trips, there's three day trips. But what I'm actually gonna do is that I'm gonna show you three different island hopping that I did. One in Coron, one in El Nido, and one in hopefully Balabac. Um, I'm going on a three, four day, three night expedition uh, with no Wi-Fi, no anything in, Bal in Balabac, Palawan. And um, island hopping is one of the best thing so there's a lot of swimming there's a lot of sports there's a lot of beaches so when you come here you definitely truly have to do island hopping but by far my favorite and number eight of things that just makes sense in the Philippines is that they are by far one of the kindest and most respectful people you would meet in wherever you travel and by that I mean like regardless of who you are or where you come from you um, are treated the same they would address you as ma'am or sir in a restaurant <laughs> the weird thing is like I was a bit worried coming to Asian countries of course about how I would be treated but I feel like I'm getting special treatment sometimes but not really they are kind they are helpful they're always ready with a smile willing to help warm um, I really, I think beyond the beautiful seas, beyond the beautiful oceans, beyond everything, my favorite thing so far about Philippines has been its people and it's such a perfect place for solo travelers. I would say even for like a first dabble into like solo traveling within Asia, Philippines is on like the top of my list. So I spent four weeks in the Philippines. I came on the 5th and I'm probably leaving on the 31st. I'm actually recording this when I have like one more week to go. I'm going on this Balabac expedition for four days and three nights in the middle of nowhere with no Wi-Fi, no service, no connection. But it's meant to be fun and nice. I've also never camped, so this is gonna be interesting. Um, so I spent four weeks in the Philippines and it's honestly not nearly enough. My itinerary was that I went from Cebu to Mobile, Mobile to Sikihor, Sikihor to Cebu, Cebu to Coron, Coron to El Nido, El Nido to Port Barton, which I currently am at, and then I'm leaving to Puerto Princesa in like two hours, and then from Puerto Princesa I'm going to Palabac for three days back to Puerto Princesa, I fly to Manila, and then I fly to Thailand. So Cebu has been my home base for like the airports I fly out to because I heard it's much more safer and better than Manila and honestly I can't like I can't argue with that so Cebu has really been my my home base it's a bit more expensive but it's fine um, 
My favorite place so far has been Port Barton and Sikihor and that just fully confirms that I am a small town girly. I am a small girl, like, like I love the small countryside because it's quieter, the nature is beautiful. Let me just show you like my hotel. This is what like the view is. I'm currently in Port Barton. It's quite gorgeous actually. Um, ooh, sorry. Sikihor and Port Barton has also been the most affordable so far. There's they're also the least like I would say westernized, whatever that means. There's still tourists here so far than the other places. So for example, to rent a scooter in Sikihor costs like only three fifty a day, whereas in um, El Nido it could cost like six hundred a day so that's something to consider what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast forward it to future Kemi to talk about my expenditure uh, and how much I spent in one month in the Philippines to give you like an idea of how much to spend or how much to save in the Philippines um, so take it away Kemi also my battery is warm again 